Hello. Today we're going to talk about a really hot topic at the moment, that's Xinjiang and its cotton. So stick around. Welcome back to the Barrett channel and welcome to another video. My name's Lee and I run this channel with my son Ollie. We cover travel and food, we cover technology and we also do opinion pieces. As I said earlier, today we're going to talk about the hot topic of cotton and Xinjiang. So to start with, at the beginning of this week, on the 22nd of March, the EU, the US and I believe Canada imposed sanctions on a number of uh, Chinese officials over um, alleged abuses of the Uyghur people in the Xinjiang region of China. It is interesting to note that although they are part of the Five Eyes, Australia and New Zealand didn't impose any sanctions, but did welcome the sanctions that were levied by the US, Europe and Canada. So there are two organisations involved in this cotton issue with Xinjiang. And both those organisations claim to be independent, but I don't believe they are independent. So the first one is the New Lines Institute who wrote a report about forced labour in the cotton industry. And that report was written by Adrian Zenz. And Adrian Zenz is, seems to be held as a Xinjiang expert by Western media, although nothing he's ever produced has ever been peer reviewed. And he's only ever visited Xinjiang some years ago for a very short period of time, I believe two or three weeks on holiday. Then the other organisation involved, BCI, the Better Cotton Initiative. Again, they claim to be independent, but after doing a bit of digging, you can see from this annual report or from their website that they are actually get some of their funding from USAID. And if you then go on to USAID and have a look through through what they're about, they say there is an independent federal government agency headquartered in Washington, D.C., receives overall foreign policy guidance from the Secretary of State, is the U.S. government's lead international development and humanitarian assistance agency and an essential component of U.S. foreign policy and national security. Now, I'm not suggesting anything here, but it could very much be that the uh, US government, through USAID, have had some influence over the decision of BCI to withdraw the licenses for Xinjiang cotton producers. So how does BCI fit into all this? Well, BCI, the, the organisation that issues licenses for cotton growers, and if the cotton growers don't have the, the license, then the manufacturers won't buy cotton from that source. So what actually happened is BCI um, stopped issuing licenses to companies in Xinjiang and therefore manufacturers stopped buying from producers in Xinjiang. And also the US put a total ban on any cotton imports from Xinjiang. So due to what BCI put on their website, many retailers, including names like H&M and Nike, issued statements on their website saying that they either didn't or they wouldn't use Xinjiang cotton because they were concerned about these human rights abuses against Uyghurs in the Xinjiang region. And this was picked up by Chinese consumers and quickly spread like wildfire on Chinese social media and a number of celebrities and, and that who had been working for some of these brands decided to end their contracts and a lot of Chinese consumers said they wouldn't buy any more from, from these brands. And what I think is really a bit crazy about this, these, these companies issue statements seemingly just off what they read from the BCI. So due to the statements of BCI, a number of apparel and clothing retailers decided to put statements on their website stating they would not or they do not buy cotton from the Xinjiang region. And this caused a backlash with Chinese consumers who started to boycott um, those brands, stop buying merchandise from them. Um, in fact, H&M was delisted from a number of e-commerce sites in China 
and also Nike has been affected by this as well as other brands. And I think they were a bit unwise to put these statements on their websites based on the information off BCI. I think what would have been a more sensible move if they'd have actually done their own audits and their own due diligence and actually audited the factories that they used to make sure that this practice wasn't happening. And a retailer who was very smart and actually did this was Skechers. And we can now have a look and, and see what Sketches have said on their website. So here you can see the statement from Sketches. Now Sketches mentioned a, a report that was published by ASPI. Now ASPI, the Australian Strategic Policy Institute, they're also claimed to be independent, but they're not. They receive funding from the US industrial military complex from companies like Raytheon and Lockheed Martin, uh, weapons manufacturers. And sketches were concerned about the report because it was talking about the forced labor of Uyghurs. And interestingly, if you read the report, and I'll, I'll just highlight these parts, sketches promptly contacted senior management at Lu Joe. And Lu Jo confirmed that members of the Weeder ethnic minority comprise a portion of its workforce, that they are employed on the same terms and conditions as all other factory employees, and in particular with respect to working conditions, pay, promotions, etc. It was also confirmed that all workers, including those from the Uyghur ethnic minority, are free to leave if they no longer wanted to work at Lu Jo. They then went on to say, Sketches has conducted two additional audits of Lujo, including an unannounced audit in June 2020, specifically directed to investigating the ASPI allegations, and another audit in November 2020. Neither of these audits revealed any indications of the use of forced labour, either of Uyghurs or any other ethnic religions or groups nor did the audits raise any other concerns about general labour conditions. So personally, I think what Sketches did was a very smart move. Instead of relying on information from other sources, they went and checked for themselves to see what was happening. And as it says, they found no instances of, of any problems. Interestingly today, the 26th of March, the BCI Shanghai office, they've also come out and made a statement saying in the last eight years, they've also found no incidents of forced labor in the Xinjiang cotton industry. I also think it will be a great opportunity for some Chinese clothing companies to have a campaign saying that our garments are proudly made from, from Xinjiang cotton. So I hope that gives you a bit more of an overview and an insight into this cotton situation in Xinjiang and why it's happened and what's happened. If anything new comes to light, my opinion might change, but right now that is my opinion on it. So as always, for now, take care.